Will my child inherit my disease? What does variant of unknown significance mean in my genetic test results? My doctor says that it's a hereditary disease, but no one in my family except me has the symptoms. Hi, my name is Larissa, and today we're going to answer all these questions and learn a lot about genetics of CMT. Let's go. <laughs> First of all, you might already know that CMT is a genetic or hereditary disease. That means that the cause of the disease is always a mutation or a pathogenic variant or a faulty gene. I sometimes hear people say, I have a CMT gene. Well, this is incorrect. We all have the same genes, but the content or composition of the genes varies from person to person. Imagine that all our genetic information is tightly packed as a DNA string, which can sometimes, depending on the cell cycle phase, be seen as chromosomes. Our DNA is composed of four nuclear bases or letters, which we can read A, C, G, and T. For genes to function normally, there is a specific order that these letters should follow. Even though our cells are great at ensuring that the letters are following the correct order, sometimes errors occurred. So for example, instead of A, a C might pop up. This is a type of point mutation. We can detect this type of mutation by sequencing using a special equipment machine called DNA sequencer. And so we can read genes letter by letter and detect the odd ones. These are called variants and sometimes they don't cause any issue, they are called non-pathogenic, but sometimes they do cause issues. And in these cases, they cause a disease to develop, symptoms to develop. In this case, this variant is called pathogenic. Yet sometimes in genetic test results, you can see the phrase variant of unknown significance. So this means that the researchers at this time don't know if this variant is pathogenic or not. In other words, they don't know if this variant is causing your symptoms, is causing your disease. Point mutations can lead to different cellular outcomes, which is important for drug development, for example. But this is a topic for another video. Now, at this moment, point mutations in more than 130 genes are known to be causing different types of CMT. The other two types of mutations which are relevant in the context of CMT are called structural variations. These are large duplications and large deletions. These types of mutation happens when a part of chromosome is abnormally copied or when a chromosome breaks. So here we're talking about a large chunk of DNA, sometimes more than one gene, removed or added. To detect this type of mutations, researchers don't use sequencing because here we don't need to read letter by letter. We need to detect a big chunk of DNA either missing or being added. So instead, researchers are using other methods such as multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification, MLPA. So this is a method to quantify a specific part of DNA and compare it to the normal amount. Notoriously, the most common type of CMT, CMT1A, is caused by a duplication of a large chunk of DNA on chromosome 17, which includes gene PMP22. Deletion mutation of the same genome region causes another disease, hereditary neuropathy with liability to pressure pulses, HNPP. So now that we know most common mutations that cause CMT, let's look at chromosomes. This will be helpful to understand how the disease is inherited. Us humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each pair is composed of a chromosome coming from your dad and a chromosome coming from your mom. So there are two copies of each gene. One copy we inherit again from one of our parents and the other copy is inherited from the other parent. We have 22 pairs of autosomal or non-sex chromosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. 
which are called that way because they determine our sex. So women have two X chromosomes and in case of boys, men, it is composed of X chromosome and Y chromosome. Now, remember I told you that CMT1A is caused by a duplication of a gene which is located on chromosome 17. Which chromosome is that? Autosomal or sex chromosome? Exactly, it's an autosomal chromosome. Therefore, the inheritance is called autosomal. And because it's a duplication in the genetic test results, you might see number of copies equals three. That means that you have CMT1A. So instead of two copies, which is the norm, one from your mom and one from your dad, you have three copies. That means that one copy got duplicated. It's a duplication and it's CMT1A. But wait, you could say what is usually added to autosomal when people are talking about inheritance of CMT1A and the majority of CMT types actually is dominant. So the inheritance is autosomal dominant. So what does this dominant part mean? That simply means that a mutation in only one copy of the gene is enough for symptoms to occur. So as you can see on this picture, if a father has CMT, for example, of the autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, then he could pass on this faulty copy to his son or to his daughter, while the second copy that will be coming to the child will be healthy from the mother who doesn't have CMT. So in this case, one copy, one faulty copy is enough for the disease to develop and the chance of passing on the disease is 50% irrespective of the sex of the child because the mutation is in the gene on the autosomal chromosome. The same would be true if mother has CMT of this type of inheritance, right? It doesn't have to be a father, it could be a mother. Again, the chance of passing on the faulty gene is 50% irrespective of the child's sex. Most CMT types, both in the types 1, which are demyelinating, and types 2, which are axonal, are of this type of inheritance, autosomal dominant, but not all. On the other hand, CMT type 4 is known for its autosomal recessive type of inheritance. Let's talk about that now. Here the disease is caused by a mutation in both copies of the gene. So the faulty copy of the gene should be coming from both parents, from the mother and from the father. And here it makes sense to talk about carriers. So both mother and father have a faulty copy of a gene, but only one. So they do not have the symptoms, they do not have the disease. But there is a 25% chance that they will pass on this faulty gene, both of them, to their child. Again, irrespective of the sex of the child. So this is autosomal recessive inheritance. Again, autosomal because the gene is located on the autosomal chromosome, not sex chromosome, and recessive, meaning that we need two copies of faulty gene for the symptoms to occur. These types of CMT are rarer, but oftentimes they are more severe than autosomal dominant types. And here again, I want to highlight that only in the context of autosomal recessive types of CMT, it makes sense to talk about carriers. So now you know what a carrier is and that it actually doesn't make sense to talk about carriers when we are talking about the majority cases of CMT, which are autosomal dominant inheritance types. Here, it's also important to introduce another term, which you can see sometimes in your genetic test results, homozygous. So that means that both letters in both copies of the gene are identical, as you can see on the picture. And this is exactly what is required for the autosomal recessive inheritance type of the disease to manifest itself. On the other hand, heterozygous, hetero, means different, right? Let's say there is one letter on one copy of the gene and another letter on the other copy of the gene, as we, you can see on this picture as well. So this is what is necessary for the autosomal dominant 
type of inheritance of CMT. So you should be able now to understand what homozygous is and heterozygous, the difference and what it means on your um, genetic test result. So again, homozygous, both letters should be the same. Heterozygous, letters are different. Homozygosity is required for autosomal recessive inheritance, so fewer types of CMT, and heterozygosity is enough for most types of CMT, autosomal dominant inheritance. Lastly, we need to talk about X-linked inheritance. This is a very interesting type of inheritance, and it is relevant for CMT type 1X because this type is caused by a mutation or like many mutations in the gene which is located on the X chromosome. Remember that it's an X chromosome. So depending on the sex of the person, there will be different numbers of X chromosomes, right? So women have two and men have one. Therefore, the way the disease will be inherited or will not be inherited by the child different depending on the sex of the child. So as you can see in this picture, if a father has a CMT type 1X, all his daughters will inherit it because they will get this faulty copy of the gene from the father's chromosome. And they will also inherit the mother's copy. But because it is X-linked dominant, one faulty copy is enough. Whereas the sons of this, of this couple, of the ill, sick father and healthy mother, will not have CMT, one X. Because the only X chromosome that they need, that they will inherit, comes from their mother, not from their father. Therefore, they don't have any chance of inheriting the disease from the father. So this is great because this is the only type of CMT which ensures that in the case of a sick father, there won't be any sick sons. So you can just get pregnant, check the sex of the child, and if it's a boy, you can be sure that everything is gonna be fine. You, should, you will not have to worry about the disease being passed on to the son. On the other hand, if the mother is the one who has CMT1X, here it doesn't matter. The sex of the child doesn't matter. Here you have 50% chance of passing on the faulty gene, the CMT1X, to your child, is irrespective of the uh, child's sex, right? Because the mother could pass on the affected chromosome to both the son and the daughter. Now, importantly, CMT1X is more severe usually in men and less severe or sometimes even almost asymptomatic among women with CMT1X. And here it's kind of speculative, but it is assumed that it is because women have two X chromosomes. So even if they have one faulty chromosome um, with the faulty gene, which is causing CMT1X, their symptoms will be milder. The second chromosome is kind of correcting for that. Now, of course, here we're talking about passing on CMT from a parent to a child. But what happens sometimes is that there is no one in the family with this disease and suddenly a person develops symptoms and the genetic test results show that there is a mutation and it's confirmed that it is CMT. So the question is, how can it possibly happen? Well, it can happen and it is the case in my case it seems like I'm a pro band. So this word, this term, means the first person with the uh, genetic fault that leads to the genetic disease. The first person in the family to be known to have the genetic disease. So pro bands happen because even though our cells are trying to ensure that there is no errors, right, in DNA, when the DNA is duplicated. So for example, we have a cell and it needs to be duplicated. One cell should produce a second cell. So what happens in this case is that the DNA from this cell is duplicated and then it is split into the second cell. So during this process, during DNA duplication process, 
there are checks and there are repairs for mutations, but they are not perfect. So sometimes just spontaneously it happens. And this kind of mutation is called de novo mutation, which is when it is not inherited from a parent, but just occurs spontaneously like that. So let's look at this picture and try to understand it a bit better. So let's say in this case, we have a paternal germline that has a mutation. So one of these sperm cells that the father has, has a mutation. So you see there is a whole bunch of spermatozoids, but only one of them has a mutation. But let's assume this is the one that managed to fertilize the egg cell of a woman, right? And then an embryo developed. And so the offspring that is born from this kind of fusion of the mutated sperm cell and healthy egg is an offspring with CMT. Now the father doesn't have any symptoms because the mutation is only in this one spermatozoid. The father doesn't have it in any of the other cells in his body. But he did pass on it to kind of pass on it to the child by unknowingly given this one spermatozoid in which the mutation occurred. There is no way to prevent this from happening, unfortunately. And this is why sometimes there is no one else in the family with CMT, but you are the lucky one, just like me. So I want to conclude this video by distinguishing CMT types not only by inheritance pattern, which we have just discussed, but also by big groups of what the disease does to the cells, to the body, right? And the well-known classification of CMT is into type 1, which is demyelinating type, type 2, which is axonal type, type 3, which is actually a historical term, and I don't want to talk about it this in this video, and type 4, which is also demyelinating type. So type 1, type 4, and type X-linked type. Sometimes it's kind of classified as a separate one, although it's sometimes classified as type 1. These are all demyelinating types, and type 2 is axonal type. So when we're talking about demyelinating types, we're talking about the degradation of myelin, the insulating material that wraps around our nerves. When we're talking about axonal types, this is type 2, and this is when the axon itself is degrading, the nerve itself is degrading. And these are distinguished from one another by nerve conduction velocity test, EMG. And so if we bring together this classification with the inheritance classification, we might say that yes, type one and two are usually autosomal dominant, and type 4 is autosomal recessive. But actually, this is not true. Some types within 1 and 2 could be autosomal recessive. And as I mentioned, of course, it's important to know the inheritance pattern of your specific type for family planning, for example. And it's important to understand your genetic test results. So I hope that this video really helped you understand all these terms such as homozygous, heterozygous, variant, pathogenic variant, non-pathogenic variant, variant of unknown significance, proband, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, autosomal chromosomes, sex chromosomes, and X-linked inheritance. So in this one video, you learned so many genetical terms, and now you can we easily talk about what kind of inheritance your CMT is and discuss with your genetic counselor how to proceed with family planning, for example. Okay, hope it was useful. Leave a comment below about what kind of CMT you have, which type, what uh, kind of inheritance it is, and whatever else you want to write down there. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.